the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Debella Entertainment and HDNet's Broadway Boxing Friday Night Face-Off. Presented by the Turning Stone Resort and Casino from the Turning Stone Resort and Casino Event Center in Verona, New York. Tonight's fights are promoted by DeBella Entertainment and sponsored by HBO Sports, LocateStock.com, and the Connecticut Defenders, formerly the Norwich Navigators, Connecticut's hometown team. This bout is sanctioned by the Oneida Indian Nation Athletic Commission. Chairman in attendance tonight, Brian Patterson. Vice Chairman, William Founier. Commissioners, Michael Cook and Robert Ryan. Executive Director, Kevin O'Toole, and the Chief Inspector, Edward Brophy. This fight is also sanctioned by the North American Boxing Association Supervisor in attendance tonight, Guy Jutras. The timekeeper at the bell is Barb Nagel. Counting the knockdown seconds, Ken Zimmer. Judging this bout on the 10-point must system, Don Ackerman, Frank Adams, and Tom Schreck. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Charlie Fitch. And now, 10 rounds of boxing for the interim NABA welterweight championship. Introducing first to my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red with white trim, weighing in officially at 146 and one half pounds. His professional record consists of 27 wins and eight losses, 17 wins coming by way of knockout, from Mercedes, Texas, Thomas Barrientes. And his opponent to my right, wearing red trunks with white, weighing in officially at 146 and one half pounds. His professional record, 19 wins and just two losses. One draw, 12 wins coming by way of knockout from Queens, New York, the mechanic. Chris Smith. Good evening, gentlemen. This fight is 10 rounds for the interim NBA welterweight championship. You both know the rules. Touch them up. Come out fighting at the bell. Referee Charlie Fitch giving both fighters their instructions. You're looking at Thomas Barrientes. He'll be going against the mechanic, Chris Smith. Smith has lost his last couple of fights in a row, but maybe the key guy in this fight, guys, will be Charlie Fitch because when a fighter has gotten into a little bit of trouble, he's kind of like got a quick trigger and putting an end to the festivities. You heard the booze because earlier tonight he stopped the fight real early, so we have to see what he does. They say the best referee is the one that's not seen, so hopefully we don't see him in this fight. This should be a real exciting matchup. Good Barrientes, he loves to be aggressive, although he's small. And Chris Smith, as we've seen him several times, he's real aggressive. He's very a very busy fighter. According to um, Copybox, you know, based on six fights, Chris Smith averages 60, 67 punches per round. The welterweight average is only 58 punches per round. Now, Barrientes has expressed a concern right. as there's right. a slip there. He has expressed a concern about getting inside and mixing it up with Smith because he's never fought at this weight before and he has some respect, we'll say, for the strength of the mechanic, at least inside. I think he kind of lied to us a little bit because he is staying inside and trying to bang with yes, him. Yes, he is. And you know what? Not a, not a bad move, and I'll tell you why. Because that's his strength. Right. You have to believe in your style. He don't know if Chris Smith is stronger than him or not. He just hear that Chris Smith is stronger. So you get in there and you see if the guy's stronger than him. The other thing I wonder about Chris Smith, he was so close to big money when he fought David Estrada. It looked like the winner would get Shane Mosley. He lost that fight. He comes back against Sean Bay Mitchell, loses that fight. What does that do to a fighter's mindset, Brian? It's just so close, he starts sliding back down the, the contender list. Well, the David Estrada fight, you know, is a, is a huge, huge um, letdown. But the Chris Smith fight, oh, I'm sorry, the um, Sean Bay Mitchell fight, Chris started coming on in that fight. And Sean Bay twisted his knee, he got cut with a nasty headbutt, and the doctor stopped the fight. Sean Bay went on points. So he should have some confidence coming off of that, that performance. 
if Barrientes has any fear, any concern about being inside, again, it's not well founded because he has decided to mix it up with Chris Smith here early in this first round and mix it up inside. As I said, guys, this is exactly what he should be doing. And Barry Andrews is turning this into his fight. And we heard Chris say he wants to throw a lot of punches and a lot of volume. I don't see it yet. Barry Andrews is the one that's just stuck to him and just throwing punches. First of 10 rounds, and both of these boxers expending a lot of energy below the waist, pushing and straining against each other for position inside. Chris is three inches taller, but it's, it's working to Barry Entis' advantage because he's right underneath Chris, just punching right in there. Chris has to stay outside like he's doing and punch from the outside, but he seems to be closing the distance and giving Barry Entis a chance to get back into the fight. Closing seconds of the first round. Right. Welcome back to Broadway Boxing. The bell for round two. Chris Smith, the mechanic, in the solid red trunks. Thomas Barrientes in the striped red trunks. CompuBox presented by LocateStock.com, the pioneer in electronic stock locates. Chris Smith is right on par on his customary high volume of punches. 70 punches thrown, 17 landed, 24%. Barrio wasn't a slouch either. 67 punches thrown, 15% landed. Brian Colin Morgan wanted Chris Smith to get busy in the first round. In your assessment, has he been any busier? Has he been a busier fighter? He has been busier, but he hasn't been a different boxer. I was looking for a different boxer tonight. Busy, but I, I, I was looking for a little better defensive, defensive um, element of his game tonight, and it's not there. You know, Chris, that has been a knock on him. Throws a lot of punches, he outworks you, but he can be hit. The funny thing is he's the taller of the two and he's doing what a lot of fighters do. He's shrinking himself down to Barry Enter's size instead of just staying up more and just shooting the jab and keeping him away from him. This is Barry Enter's just taking a part of Chris's offense away by just smothering him. Second of ten rounds here at Turning Stone Resort and Casino. Now it does look like Chris is a little um, overpowering here. After every exchange he pushed Barrios back. Which was just what Barrientes was concerned about yesterday as Smith landing some good blows inside. Brian, you've seen uh, Chris fight a lot of times. His legs always that wide. Yes, because he likes to you know, dig down, stay planted, and just punch. He told us he wanted to throw a lot more punches. I'm not seeing it yet. He always did throw a lot of punches, but he seems like a little below what Chris Smith usually throws. You said you like it when a boxer is lying. Everybody's lying to me this weekend. <laughs> Both guys coming forward. Both guys just trying to land a big shot right now. You see, Chris should, although he's not really a big jab, but he should be using his jab yeah. a little bit more. Barrientes has lost his mouthpiece. He's still firing him. It's going to be interesting to see if this fight does get to later rounds, what the legs of Barrientes will be like. Low in action. Replace the mouthpiece. Referee Charlie Fitch says, let's get that piece of rubber back in there. So Barrientes goes over to his corner and uh, will accommodate the referee. Does, is, is there any kind of, any kind of signal in a boxer's mind when that mouthpiece goes out? No, especially early. If it's late, you can say, you know, yeah, he's getting tired, starting to breathe more out of his mouth. But early on, I don't think a loss of mouthpiece has, has any effect. This is a hot, hard round to score. Time! Seconds down. Welcome back to Broadway Boxing, presented by Turning Stone Resort and Casino. If you're being battered, you want the low, so you want to grab the guy, you know, so that thought is in your head. But if you're um, coming on, you know, on strong, you don't want the referee to notice it. You don't want to lower an action, so no. Just left by Chris Smith, and Barrientes tried one of his own. 
round three of ten. Bill Daughtry along with Brian Adams and Tony Page at the Turning Stone Resort and Casino. CompuBox presented by LocateStock.com, the pioneer in electronic stock locates. Get a look at punch stats from round two. Chris Smith threw, there's his high volume he took, 95 punches to 72 thrown by Barrientos. And 24 landed, 25% from Chris. And on the 18%, 13 punches landed for Barrientos. Break! Now this is the Chris Smith I'm used to. On the outside, controlling the action, shooting the jab up on his toes, throwing a lot of punches. That inside thing, that never was his game. That was more for Barrientos. Barrientos, once he gets in there, has got to stay there. But he can't stay at the end of Chris's jab. Yeah, I always thought Chris can be more effective from the outside, throwing punches. But um, for some reason, he just chose throughout his career to fight inside. The macho thing, you think? <laughs> you know how it gets in their head. <laughs> I can knock this guy out. I can do it. Barrientes continues to hold his own, especially on the inside exchanges with the mechanic, Chris Smith, who is a lot busier and a lot more mobile here in round three. You could step back just like that, work the jab, make Barry Entis come after you. Well, Chris Smith is known to um, have guys come at him, throw a lot of punches. He's pretty accurate with his shots. But, you know, er earlier on, I didn't think that was really his, you know, his liking for, for the matchup. The inside, just throwing punches, and then Barry Entis throw punches. So this is more his style. This, this, should ha this is exactly how he should be fighting. And to his credit, referee Charlie Fitch has been virtually invisible yep. in this fight. Don't talk him up. <laughs> Inside a minute to go in round number three. Barry Anthony should be moving his head and trying to come forward. Just when he's in there, just tap Smith. Do something. He can't stay on the outside. And Chris looks sharp, though. One, yeah. two, three. One, two, three. In and out. I think Barry Entos is still getting used to the foreign territory of fighting in 140 plus pounds, uh, the land of 140 plus, plus plus pounds. You can feel in that power. Less than 10 seconds to go. Welcome back to Broadway Boxing, presented by Turning Stone Resort and Casino. We're underway in round four, 10 round fight between Chris Smith and Thomas Barrientes. CompuBox presented by LocateStock.com, the pioneer in electronic stock locates. Well, clearly Chris, Chris Smith is the busier fighter, 235 punches thrown, 55 landed, as opposed to 169 punches thrown, 34 landed for Barrientes. I mean, Chris Smith normally have a higher percentage, 28%, I mean, that's pretty bad for Chris Smith. <laughs> Usually landing about 100 around, so it's a little under that. Barrientes with the white trim on his trunks. And guys, at this point, if I'm Barrientes, I got to be pretty happy with the kind of fight that I'm fighting because he's fighting his fight. And I expected, you know, it's funny. He seemed to be a little more in control the first round, round and a half. And maybe he just started feeling the power a little bit of Chris Smith at 147. Backed up a little bit. Now he's back to inside, which is, which is where he did his best work. Well, another thing oh. here. Nice up a couple about Chris Smith. But nothing, according to punch stats, Chris Smith is throwing 78 punches per round as opposed to 56. 22 punches more per round thrown than Barrientes. So the, the high output is definitely affecting Barrientes. So Chris very effective when he's on the outside. Barrientes very effective when he's in the inside. Nice shot by Chris Smith. The one thing I don't see from Chris Smith, I don't see the angles on the inside. He normally turn guys, punch off of the turns. He, he's just like standing right in front right of that front. Yeah. Well, Colin Morgan said you're fighting like this is a sparring session. You got to show the crowd. Can't disagree with him because, again, Chris Smith, for all the newness that is supposed to be in his game, he's not bringing a lot of juice in there right now. See, that was a spin that I'm, I'm used to seeing. It's like Chris is doing just enough to win, which is good, but he seems like we all see he could be doing more. Then again, it's easy for us because we're down here, but he needs to, you know, the old Chris Smith throws a lot of punches. He should be doing more. I mean, it should be in his mind to do more because he has two losses this year. Nice good right hand, left hand, I should say, by Smith. 
That stunned Barry Antis. Just missed with overhand right on the inside, please. Barry Antis doesn't seem to be digging his punches right now. He's, he's right there, but see, he's not throwing any punches, not digging to the body to try and slow down Chris. But Chris is going to the body on the inside. One thing I noticed, Chris has punched a little harder tonight than normal. Maybe that's part of the new Chris Smith, but we talked about the legs in the first round. Smith still has the zing in his, Barrientes apparently not. Good round by Chris. Time! The bell for round number five, as you heard. Colin Morgan tell his fighter that was better. That was better. He said that, but he still wasn't too happy. The tone in his voice he still wasn't too happy. Wasn't emphatic enough, huh? CompuBox presented by LocateStock.com, the pioneer in electric stock locates. As you see, the records of both guys. Betty Antes, you know, 35 fights. Chris Smith only 22 fights. In round four, I was just told Chris Smith landed 85, 108. 85 is 108 shots landed with power shots. He's up in that 100 uh, range already. That's Christmas for you. It took him a while to get warmed up. Barrientes throwing a little bit more of a jab here as we are in the early stages of round five. Christmas is really busy as you can see on the punch that's, that was just shown. Barrientes, he seems to be in survival mode right now. He's just, just not as aggressive as he was, especially in that first round. He stays outside and Chris gets him. He comes inside and Chris gets him. And that's just after, there's usually no plan C. I don't want to call it survival mode, but he is getting a little bit busier, as we said, throwing a jab early on in this fifth round. And I do think Barrientes is, is wearing down somewhere. He's got to keep coming forward. Don't, don't give it up yet. Right! And again, that goes back to that strength I don't know if we can call it a disadvantage but he wasn't too confident about what he would do inside against Smith maybe that's what he went inside early to really test him out to see what he had he's right there should be letting his hands go but he's, he's not throwing he's letting Chris get off first Smith is landing in in those clinches good one, left by Barry Antics. one thing I noticed Chris is throwing power shots his legs are planted but yet his balance is still solid He's not off with his balance. Most guys are playing hard. They have no balance. Smith now dropping down and working on the body of Barrientes. A couple of good lefts to the jaw. But he should keep the distance on the inside. Step back just a tad bit and let your hands go. It's an advantage he has that he hasn't been using enough. As Barrientes lands a couple of blows off the clinch. This is all Chris Smith. I just I expect a little more out of Barrientes. He's just not putting his punches together. Could be fighting a guy a little bit bigger than him, but uh, he was effective early. Just not following his own blueprint. blueprint. But the thing about it, Barrientes, I think it is serving well to be able to push Chris Smith backwards. He's not really pushing Chris back. Chris is the one moving forward. And the end of round five. You know what? As Chris Smith, the mechanic, is getting it done, but I don't think he's getting it done to the satisfaction of his corner. Here you go. Chris Smith on the left, throwing punches, doing well, having it okay. And there's Barrientes trying to come forward, trying to set himself. Here comes Chris. You see Barrientes just trying to get in there, work this. Another look at it. Barrientes off balance. Chris Smith misses some shots. Barrientes just trying to get that one shot in to try and change the tempo of this fight. Just about missed it. Well, I mean, I keep screaming, I mean, every time you breathe, double the leg. You get it, you get going again, go to sleep with it, then you come up the middle. Come on, listen. All right? All right, let's go. Hook the body with your mic, you mean it. Touch it. Look like you mean stopping it. the fight? Well, Charlie Fitch, the referee, has stepped into the Barrientes corner, and he says this fight is over. Barrientes was actually pointing to his right elbow, right arm area, so I'm curious to see what happened. 
I, mean, I didn't really see anything. <laughs> Nor did I, but we'll we'll figure this whole thing out when we come back from Ladies and gentlemen, after the fifth round, at the advice of the doctor, the bout is stopped due to a broken hand. The winner by technical knockout and the NABA interim welterweight champion, the mechanic, Chris Smith. Chris Smith moves to 20 wins against two losses and a tie. Brian, your thoughts on the fight? Real unfortunate for Barrientes. I mean, I, I, can, I can attest to how that feels. I have four broken hands in my career. So real bad, um, unfortunate situation for Barrientes. But I do think Chris Smith, you know, good work, put in some good work.